Ready to have your mind blown? Cause I, I wasn't, I really wasn't prepared for this day at all. No amount of preparation can prepare you for what you are about to see. And there's so many more. Like Chris just told me another one. Chris is the guy behind the camera, by the way. Say hi, Chris. Hey, guys. hey. Hey everyone, it's me, Rachel. And I'm here today to give you our top 10 list of the mind blowing Mandela effect examples that defy reality. Let's try a little experiment before we start. In the comments below, write down the ones that blew your mind to see how many of us remembered the same, like remember the same things, remember different things. And I'm, I'm just really, really curious. Let's get started and also stay tuned for a comment shout out at the end. Woo, so fun. Okay, number 10, Mandela. What is the Mandela effect for those of you who don't know? Well, it is essentially a phenomenon where large amounts of people remember an idea or an event wrong. It was coined in 2009 after an article was published by Fiona Broom who noticed the phenomenon that people seem to remember Nelson Mandela dying in prison during the 1980s, but that's obviously wrong because he died in 2013. I, well, I guess not so obvious since a lot of people swear that it happened. Many people believe that these examples are proof that we could be living in a parallel branch of the universe. After all, if you follow Hugh Everett's many worlds hypothesis, it could be that Mandela was both alive and dead at the same time. Hence the term, the Mandela effect. Number nine, Looney Tunes versus Looney Tunes sound the same but it's not. So many people believe that Looney Tunes was actually spelled T-O-O-N-S, but the reality is that it's actually tunes, like iTunes. Doesn't seem like that big of a difference, but why would it be tunes? Why would it be tunes? The show isn't about music, though musical numbers do occasionally happen, but it's not about music. The reason it's tunes, not Tunes lies way back in the 1920s. Disney was making bank on a series called Silly Symphonies that encouraged people to buy sheet music. They didn't have television, so entertaining themselves at the piano was a common thing to do. To keep the bank roll rolling, Disney came out with two new programs, Merry Melodies and the Looney Tunes. The more you know. Number eight, Oscar Mayer versus Mayer. It's actually Oscar Mayer, not Mayer. It's actually spelled M-A-Y-E-R not M-E-Y-E-R. Confused? It's okay, it's not your fault. There's actually an explanation as to why so many people think the spelling is the latter. In the famous Oscar Mayer Wiener song, see Oscar, I can't help but say it. Oscar Mayer Wiener song, the singers say Oscar Mayer, which doesn't spell out Mayer in our heads. So like we know Mayer is supposed to be pronounced Mayer. Just look at John Mayer, that's how he spells his last name. And it would be weird to call him John, John Mayer, right? Try singing the song in your head right now or out loud, do you? And try saying, Mayer instead of Meyer. Hmm, sounds weird, doesn't it? Number seven, we are the champions. So I actually listened to this song when I found this out, which was today. It's true. And the karaoke lover inside me feels betrayed. I distinctly remember the ending of the song, Freddie Mercury belting out of the world, but he doesn't. He doesn't do it. But every time we kind of, but every time I catch myself singing, like waiting to join him in that final triumphant of the world at the end of the song, but it never happens. And now I know why, because he never did it. <laughs> Freddie actually only ever ended the song that way once when he performed at Wembley Stadium. The performance was so iconic that we remember it that way. Number six, Henry VIII and his turkey leg. I remember going to medieval fairs, medieval times as a kid, it was my jam. And carts always sold massive, like I don't even know how they got a bird that big, massive turkey legs. A famous portrait of Henry VIII shows him with a turkey leg, but that's not actually the case. But historians swear they saw it and swear that it existed. He's actually holding a pair of leather gloves in his hand. Perhaps because of his heavy set depiction and malicious behavior in life, many people wanted to find a reason to make fun of the king, so you'll often see cartoon drawings of the king often paired with a turkey leg in his hand. Another reason people paired this image with Henry is due to another painting of him and Anne Boleyn. In it, he is holding a mirror, which somewhat appears to be a turkey leg. Number five, guys, this one's weird. I never noticed it. Obviously, I would have, they wouldn't be on this list if I knew it before, right? I guess so. Anyways, C3PO, the golden droid of the franchise, wasn't actually all that golden. Apparently, he has a silver leg. Maybe it was the lighting in each shot, but I seriously don't know. I don't know how I could have overlooked this. I've watched four, five, and six specifically because six is my favorite because it's obviously the best. I've watched them so many times and I never noticed it, not once. But I'm comforted. I don't even think I can call myself a Star Wars fan anymore. It's just, I feel so lied to. But I'm comforted by the fact that I'm not the only one. To be fair, there's so much going on 
the film, I never thought to look at his leg and be like, oh, look at his leg. But apparently this discrepancy is due to the fact that when manufacturers released the toy of C-3PO, they didn't add the silver leg, leading most of us to believe he was entirely gold. Number four, the Bernstein Bears. Everyone remembers the Berenstein Bears on TV in the morning or after school. For me, there was nothing better than grabbing a glass of OJ, sitting down with some cereal, seeing what those bears would get up to next. Before you get worried, yes, they actually existed. But of course there's a but. It's Berenstain Bears. Stain, not Stein. I swear to God, they changed it and just didn't tell anyone there's no way. The reason we might remember it that way is probably because of how we say it. No one says, oh, the Berenstain Bears. Nobody says it like that. So, somehow we got into the habit of saying it that way and we put the pieces together in our head. Funny little world. Funny little world. All right, number three, Curious George. Had to be one of my absolute favorite stories as a kid. I just loved getting to hear all about that mischief the monkey was gonna get into. Curious George is a monkey after all, and most monkeys have tails. Something the illustrator left out when he created George. He gave a man a big yellow hat, but he didn't give George a tail. Again, I, I asked the MA team, and we were pretty well divided. Some people knew he didn't have one right away, which kind of goes to show how big of a fan they were. Me. I'm still struggling to picture George hanging from a tree using his legs and not his tail. Doesn't make sense in my head. Anyways, number two, the Monopoly Man. This one caused a fair amount of discourse between the MA gang. I don't know how this happened. I can't unsee it in my brain. I actually hate Monopoly because it just never ends. I need there to be an ending so then I can leave and escape and run away. Cause like, if the game goes on too long, I wanna die. My nightmare was once playing a two hour game of Monopoly. That little monocled man laughing at me when I was sent to jail. Except for the fact he didn't have a monocle. He has 2020 vision. How the heck? How did I remember that wrong? Apparently, the reason could be that he looked very similar to the peanut man. I don't know. What do you think, guys? Number one, this is for all the 90s babies or 80s babies, whatever, whatever works. Shazam! I think I had to take a knee for a minute after this one. It just doesn't make sense. Do you guys remember the comedian Sinbad playing a genie in a movie called Shazam? Two kids accidentally summon a genie and Sinbad played the genie who tried to make their dad fall in love again. Like, I can, I can see it. I can see it in my head. Sinbad with his like purple shirt and turban and stuff and, and he's hilarious and he was charming and snarky but it doesn't exist there are pictures but no one knows where it's from and I looked on his IMDB and there's no there's no there's no movie where he played a genie but there's pictures of him playing a genie and I just don't get it there was a movie called Kazam with a similar premise but played by Shaquille O'Neal which I also remember I definitely watched that movie too if Shazam doesn't exist where did this picture come from I don't know which I also remember but it was a different movie than Shazam where did it go? Where did it go? Or did it exist at all? Who knows? Okay, I hope your brain is still intact. Mine certainly isn't, as you can tell, because I'm just rambling like a mad woman. That was our top 10 Mandela effects example that defy reality. If you like this video, Smash that like button and uh, let us know if we missed any. But it's time for some comment shout outs, so let's keep on going before we say goodbye. From Spring Po. To my knowledge, it's always been the portrait of Dorian Gray, not the picture of Dorian Gray. Just another Mandela effect. Oh! Now I have to figure out whether I remember it as the portrait or picture. Did I, I think I said picture, right? That's weird. That's so, that's so hilarious that you put that on this video when I did this video today. That's, that's great. Spring Po. Thanks for blowing my mind, yet again. Johnny on uh, the same video. Why does the Letta doll kind of look like Miss Trunchbull from Matilda? Just me? No, not just you. I think that makes sense. I think if Miss Trunchbull were to have her own like doll version, it would be Letta. You're correct. That's a that's a disturbing observation. That's quite good though. DM Gamer Lady. Ooh, okay. I this is a story. Okay. I live in Houston, Texas, and while this town is most definitely haunted, the area where I live is doubly so. I literally live next door to a cemetery. Quietest neighbors I could ever ask for. JK, but seriously, there's something with my house. When I was younger, I had invited a friend from school to come stay over one weekend. Since she lived fairly close, her parents agreed and let her come over. Looking back at this years later, I wish she hadn't come. We started off by watching movies, being goofy teenagers, and generally having a good time. But things took a quick turn for the not so good. My friend dragged out six pencils, all sharpened, and handed me three of them. She said to make a half square and hold the erasers of the two pencils to each end of the third. Basically, it was a makeshift Ouija board. The way it works is you ask questions when the square is completed by the outer four pencils touching. If the end goes in, it's a no. If the end plays out, 
it's a yes. If one end is in and the other is out, it's an I don't know or a maybe. I seriously wish we never played this game. My friend asked a question and we got a yes. I asked one and got a no. This went on for a few minutes. Finally, I asked a question about a cousin of mine who died by his own hand, and the answer I got was extremely violent. The pencils went in, out, in, out, in, out, maybe out, and then they stopped on no. I have no idea what happened after that. There's a three hour gap in my memory that I cannot recall whatsoever. All I remember is my friend huddled in a far corner of the room, shaking in terror, crying and hugging her knees. She said my eyes turned black and the pencils broke into little bits, but that's all she would say. To be honest, I don't even remember if the game was ever closed. That's um, terrifying. I wish I saved that to put that in the story because that's really good. Holy crap, man. I hope you're safe now. Thank you so much everyone for watching and subscribing. Special shout out to Robert Spencer, Wendy Booth, and Tom Flynn for all your kindness and support across videos. I hope you all have an amazing day, though I assume you'll be Googling to double check your memory. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher, and until next time, take care, guys.